With Microsoft Copilot, you get GPT for Turbo for free. Here's how to install and learn everything about Copilot. To find Copilot, you navigate to copilot.microsoft.com. Down here in Ask Me Anything, we can write any task to Copilot. For example, explain game theory, hit enter, Copilot will generate an answer for us. Right now, we are not even logged into Copilot, but it still works. We want a Copilot account. To maximize the benefit of Copilot, we will get access to a lot more features than this non-logged in instance, but you can use it without logging in. Let's see how we can get the free account. To do so, we go up to sign in here. Here I can choose to sign in with a personal account or with a work or school account. I recommend using a personal account because then you can use it both at work or in private. And of course you can also do that with a work account, but that belongs to your work email address. There's also more features in the personal accounts. So I will definitely go with that. Here you can sign in with your personal email. That will be an Outlook or Hotmail, or like me, we will just create a new one if we don't have any. Here I pray create one, get a new email address. Here we can choose between an Outlook or Hotmail. We will just go with the Outlook. So pick an email, pick a password, pick your, uh, tell your name, click next a few times and, and here we go. We now have our Copilot account. So to get started with Copilot. Microsoft prepared a few examples. So all of these are examples on prompts. So that is to inspire you. I can just uh, scroll through them. For example, write code for a linked list structure in C with functionalities to add, delete and find notes. Well, let's go try that. This will be very advanced code. Don't worry, this will not be a coding lesson. So right now we get this code and yes, this is very impressive. The benefit of logging in, that is go up here to the upper right corner. For the first, you'll see your name, click that. You can see that we are now logged in. You can even also logged in with a work account so you can switch between those. But the benefit is this reasons. Here you will see your history. In a few seconds, when this code is done by Copilot, Copilot will give this a title and then we can navigate back to these answers, either because we are going to use them again or if we want to refine them or even conversate more. That's the beauty of Copilot. We can have a conversation with it. Right now, we're just starting softly and we will just have one prompt, which is the ingoing task and then one answer. So here you can see that now we have a singly linked text in C. What you also get access to is plugins. We'll get back to those. One thing that we also need to do, that is to go up to the three dots here, choose settings. We will also create a profile that matches this one here. Feel free to use your default profile if you prefer that. I take an add profile. Here it says that um, click add and here I can choose an account. So either choose one from this drop down or pick yours. I'll click the drop down and say add new account. Then I will say sign in to sync your data. Now I'll need the email that I used when we created this Copilot account. And again, remember your Copilot password because this password will be the password that gets you back into Copilot. Then a few pop-ups will load. Just accept everything from Microsoft. So right now it loads. Confirm and continue. Fine. Um, here, make your Microsoft experience more useful to you. It's not necessary to do so. And I'll click finish. And I'll also click accept minus in Danish. That's because I'm from Denmark right now. What we then need to do is again to click the three dots, click settings here. Now you can see that I have my personal account. Go click the sidebar. Then you want to go into the Copilot sidebar. 
And here we have some settings. This is settings for the Copilot sidebar, which you will find over here in the upper right corner. Try to click it. You can see it says just a moment. We will get back to the very high usefulness of this sidebar. For now, close it again. Here you'll see that it shows Copilot. If I uh, untick this, you will not see it up here. So we will not do that. We will also uh, allow Microsoft to access the page content. This means that we can use the Copilot when we surf around on the internet. Imagine that we are doing a competitor analysis. We are on a competitor's website. Then we can use the Copilot to ask questions to that. So pick the allow Microsoft to access page content. That is fine. Then we're going back to Copilot. You can hit back up here a few times or just go to Copilot microsoft.com. This is the address to get back to Copilot. Here you also need to accept some cookies again. So right now we are locked in. We can try something more. Cool. So right now you can see I can choose between three conversation styles. I have the creative, the balanced and the precise. The default one is balanced. That is the GPT 3.5. And here we are getting a mix between creative and precise answers. So if I go down here, I can ask, for example, what's the capital of Denmark? Then I hit enter. That will give you uh, the capital in Denmark. Right now, the input of the balanced one that is limited to 2000 characters. It's very fast working, but usually I will not go with this balanced one. So again, to create a new topic, I just click here. I can also go with the creative or the precise. The creative, if I click that, that uses the DPT or engine. And this is a very powerful engine. And this is uh, the one that you pay $20 per month for in ChatGPT. Then we have the precise. I use that for research. Again, right now you have a 4,000 character limit. It also uses the GPT-4 and GPT-4 turbo language models. These ones will improve over time. So we're doing some Q&A down here. And if I want to ask a question, that could be, what are the, let me move the mouse, the main elements of a contract? I hit enter. And then we are uh, getting what a contract is. That is very convenient. Let me fast forward till Copilot has finished this answer. That's it. And again, if you move over here to reasons, you will see that we have the elements of a contract and then we have our previous prompt, which is the single linked list in C. The strange here, you can also see that they got different colors. That is the balanced and the creative. I can jump back to previous conversations. So for example, if I click here, you will see that we have the code again, and I can jump to elements of a contract. You will use this a lot, either to reuse or to adjust uh, these conversations a bit more. We can even continue the conversations. So again, I click new topic here, and then I can, for example, ask, how do I copy data in most software programs? It's also a very nice tool to get IT support. Right now we are getting the IT support or if I'm IT support, I could also actually paste in a lot of the questions and uh, copy the answers Copilot gives me back to the users. Here we can see that to copy data in most software programs, you typically, typically use the copy and paste commands. Here's a general guide on how to do it. Select the data that you want to copy. Uh, right click. Yes, I'm sure you're aware of that, but we also get a both a PC and a Mac guide. And then again, it shows up 
over here. Now we have tree. So once Copilot is done with the answer, you will have a title over here. There you go. We now have tree elements. So far, so good. Let's uh, pick a new topic. So we can choose to let's say we want to go a little bit more precise. That could be that we want some, some do some research. And then we will not use the creative uh, engine. That is because uh, in there we give Copilot uh, a lot of freedom to vary its answers. You will also see that my answers that I get from Copilot compared to yours will vary a bit. That is how Copilot work. So let's go to precise. Now we want to do some research. So that could be what is the rat rate in Denmark? Like this. You can see I make some spelling errors. I could in fact just send them to Copilot. Copilot would easily understand the context anyways. So this is a very great tool for people that might not spell 100% correct. Here you can see that the standard value added tax rate in Denmark is 25%. You can also see that I now have some links here. One, two, three, four. But if I go back here in my conversations, let's just do that. We can easily come back here to the singly linked list in here. We also have links. Then in the elements of a contract, we have no links. And that is because this information were already nested in the training data of Copilot. And here's what Copilot says about this training data and how it uses internet searches and provide us link training data. I use my training data to answer questions that are factual, well established and not time sensitive. For example, if you ask me about the definition of a word, a historical event or a scientific concept, I can provide an answer based on the knowledge I was trained on. And about the internet search, I used internet search when the information requested is likely to be time sensitive or not covered in my training data. For example, if you ask about recent news events, the latest sports scores or current stock prices, I would use an internet search to provide the most recent information. So that made sense. It already have the main elements of a contract in its training data. Let's move on to a very nice use case of Copilot. I click new topic again. Again, I can choose between precise or creative. Let's just go creative. That will be what you use most. Sometimes when it's facts, we will indeed use precise. And if it needs to be a quick answer, we will use balanced. So let us have an example from the real world. I teach Copilot and ChatGPT to companies. That's in fact my job. And I had a doctor that already uses Copilot to communicate with his patients. And let me just follow up on that. Let's first do the prompt. So here you say, translate the following into English and then a colon. Let's structure our prompts a little bit better. That is not because ChatGPT can't understand when prompts are not well structured, but this is mainly to benefit ourselves because we can come back. We already saw that we can come back to the previous conversations over there in recents. And it's easier to understand what's going on if we have structured the prompts well. So now click shift on your keyboard, click enter with your keyboard again while you hold shift in. That will do line breaks instead of sending the prompt. So now here I can ask about something. So here I can say, uh, what do I need to have translated? That could be, let's just pick some Danish. If you speak a foreign language, you can do that. DDPR. Eller skal over overholdes som beskrevet i personale håndbogen. And if you cannot find this uh, weird A, just pick two A's like this. And again, you can see here we have two elements of the prompt. We have the task and then we also have some text that needs to be translated. So to separate this, and this is also a great way to tell uh, GPT that we are going to, that there's two parts of this prompt. I use three single quotation marks and I go down here, have shift enter, 
do three single quotation marks. So I surround the text that I need to do, that I, that I want to do something about, I surround them with three single quotation marks. That is just consensus online. So right now I can click submit. And yes, this is uh, not something that is very impressive. Google Translate can already do this. But again, my student, that was a doctor, he used this to communicate with his patients. He had a lot of uh, Ukrainian refugees here in Denmark, and we have no translators. That's because uh, we are overwhelmed with these um, poor people that needs help. It's a very sad situation. But then he uses Copilot to talk to them, and he can add tones. So if uh, he needs to translate something um, very easy to understand, it could be a... 10 year old boy with no parents, then you can just add the tone to the prompt. So let's go up here with the mouse. Let's copy this prompt, have a new topic, control V, paste in the prompt again. Now go up here to English, add a dot, and then you can probably say something like translate in an easy to understand language. Here, when I click enter, you might not see a difference, so we can change it to a tone, which will be even more um, apparent that we actually added the tone. So let's go copy this again. Let's say new topic, control V, paste it in. And then we want to say, instead of easy to understand, let's have a humorous language. And let's a humorous language here. Now you will see that it will get a little bit jokish because that's what we answered it about. So although this is a uh, very light uh, hearted here, we're just making a jokes because uh, just like the sacred text of the employee handbook decree, I'm not sure that is very fun, but it is more humorous before. This is how the doctor used that. So we can add tones. We will get back to that later in this course. Let's um, have a new topic here. So let's do some math. So I can go down here and then I can say, how do you calculate the area of a circle and then hit enter? Then Copilot can help me with my homework or my kids homework. Um, so the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared it even gives us an example. We can do more advanced math here. So when I say new topic, here I can say something like, how do you find the break even point for a new product based on fixed and variable cost. And I use enter whenever I need to send this prompt. I can also use this arrow, but I find enter the most uh, easiest way to do it. And that is because I already write on the keyboard. So now we are sending uh, this prompt here. It will teach me about math from a um, on based on fixed and variable costs in um, explain the break even point. So here you can see that we have some terms. Let's say that I often when I do this research, then I find these answers hard to understand. I do research with copilot all the time. Then let me show you a killer prompt, a follow up. One. You can even see we have an illustration here. So let's uh, have a follow up prompt. And I can say explain it to me like I was in fifth grade. This is a very powerful tool because now I will have a very, very easy to understand um, explanation. Now I have a lemonade stand and now it uh, translate these advanced terms into lemonade language. This will be very easy to understand for me. So don't be ashamed, use this prompt, explain it to me like you were, you were in fifth grade, 12 years old or whatever you prefer. That will be a very, very nice way to easily understand a lot of 
complicated topics. Let's also see how Copilot can summarize things. Let's go find a text. So I open up a new tab. Let's navigate to google.com and just accept. My Google is in Danish again. So here let's search for artificial intelligence and hit enter. Scroll a little bit down and then pick the Wikipedia. Now you click here. So here we have an artificial intelligence here. Let's just grab the header and uh, the first paragraph. And then I go back to Copilot. Then I say new topic. So try to say summarize this text in three bullets. Again, easy to understand. Then we have a line break. So shift enter. Then I have these three single quotation marks. That was two. Shift enter. Control V, paste the text, and I could also end it with three single quotation marks. Right now, the limit in the creative mode is 4,000 characters. Here you can see that we almost reaches it. And click Submit. In two minutes, I'll show you how we can bypass this. Right now, we get a simplified summary of the text. Artificial intelligence is the simulation of human intelligence and then the integration of AI in society. So this is very good. You can also use it to train to an exam. So for example, here I can ask uh, create three FAQ questions and answers based on the text. So right now it creates three FAQ. I can use that on my homepage or if I train to an exam, I can have these questions and answers written to me. I can check my knowledge. I also do it when I want to prepare for a meeting. Let's say that I need to convince some stakeholders. I can uh, describe what I want to convince them about. Then I can say what will be the main things that these stakeholders will ask me about or they will object about. And then I can have the optimal answers. I can even describe the persons that might have these objections to get even better uh, answers, questions and answers, but it's also going to prepare me well for meetings. So this is really nice. It's also a great way to train for exams. We saw that we only have this four character 4,000 character limit. If I go back here, let's also try to say, let's also have the goals with us. So here we can see we have the goals. Let's scroll all the way down to general intelligence. Let's go copy this. If I try to make a new topic, and if I try to paste it in here, you will see that we have 4,000 characters and it will stop in the middle of the text. We cannot use that so I will delete it. What I can do instead is to go to the notebook. And here I can put in a prompt. I can see that the context limit is now 18,000. So here I can say summarize uh, the following text in three bullets. Easy to understand. And then a dot. Here, I don't need to click Shift Enter. I can just click Enter. Then it will do line breaks. Yes, it's not easy. Then I have these three single quotation marks. One Enter, click More. Control V to paste in the text. And now you can see I can paste in all the text. I can even go down here and have three single dots in the end. Then I can click Submit. So right now, uh, what Notebook does is that I can have uh, conversations with a longer context, which is very, very convenient. Let us uh, have it um, write this. So now we have a summary based on a much longer text. We will not use Notebook anymore in this course. So let me go back to Copilot. Right now we're here. Copilot is also good to do timeline of events. So if I go down here, then I can say make a timeline of the financial crisis and hit enter. Then it will create a timeline of the financial crisis. 
with dates. And again, these could vary. And that's because the way Copilot works, first of all, it is a lang large language model that predicts what we want to hear. So it's statistic. That means that the, the results can vary. We will see that we have the same context, most likely. And also, if we are in creative, we give it even more degrees of freedom to answer those. But here again, we can see we have the sources. It's also a great way to generate ideas. So here I say new topic. And here I can say suggest three strategies to improve customer relations and customer satisfaction in a company that sells maybe online courses. That could easily be the parameter here, could be whatever you sell in your company. Then we are having three strategies. We can even choose to work further with them. Again, we will rate that to the more advanced part of this video. Here we are having um, a great way of um, generating ideas. We can also do creative writing. That is great for problem solving, like inspiration to solve problems and strate strategic thinking. So if I say new topic here, write a short story about a fictional company facing a sudden decline in sales. Describe how administrative staff navigates through the challenge and propose innovative solutions. So now I'm getting creative writing, which I can use for strategic uh, thinking. And again, I could uh, be more precise uh, in my input. I can even add more context. So here I can see that we in the bustling city of New York, a uh, one thriving tech company named. So here I could easily add that I lived in India or uh, Bolivia or wherever I am based, and I have this and this problem that I need to solve. Copilot is so strong in solving these. Let's also see how we can get feedback. And this is another great tip for you. So pay closely attention to this. Let me open up a new tab. Here I go to CNN.com. And here we have some different news. Let's pick one of these news. Let's pick a nut. I prefer not to pick um, one that is uh, way too sad. Let's just, uh, let's just pick this. You, it's of course, not the same news when you visit the site. Eurovision stars revealed uh, she doesn't speak before midday. Well, let's pick that. Let me click accept. Let's say that I was the journalist that wrote this or that I started to wrote this article and then I want feedback. Here I want to, I often want to um, get feedback to text right now. This could also be a Word document. So copy everything from your article of choice. You can even have these ones here. So control C, then we go back to Copilot and have a new topic. When we ask about feedback, let us try to do that. So here I say, I am a journalist for CNN. Give me suggestions for improvements to the article below. Let me start slow and again, shift enter two times three quotation marks, shift enter, control V, paste in the article, three quotation marks, and let's send it. This is not a very good way to get feedback with Copilot because now the feedback will be quite messed up. Sometimes it does this, sometimes it starts to rewrite something. Um, it's not very precise. So here you can see that uh, it says title, lead, uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's click stop responding. This means that I stop Copilot in responding, that then I can start another conversation. You can only have one conversation at a time. So here I say new conversation. And um, let's just make it a bit more strategic, this prompt. So again, I can say I am a, I could have uh, copy pasted this first one, CNN. 
give me suggestions for improvements to the article below. And here comes the key. So if you say in a table, then you get the feedback in a table. And this is very nice for several reasons. Stay tuned. Because then I say list wordings that can be improved in the first column. Then we say suggested improvements in the second column and an explanation of the improvement in the third column. Then I have a shift enter two times. I can even have a dot up here. Shift enter two times, three single quotation marks, shift enter, control V, three single quotation marks once more, and then we hit enter. This is nice because right now you can see that we are getting into the table and here we are getting, uh, forget shouting, Singa Lulu says she doesn't even speak before noon. And here it says that Singa Lulu embraces silence, refrains from speaking before noon. Then the title is more positive and capture the essence of Lulu's discipline, blah, blah, blah. Here again, we can add context to what we want to accomplish because Right now, we just said that we were a, a journalist for CNN, and it will give us answers uh, based on that. It could be that we were writing to kids, older conservative people, however, our target group were, then these suggested improvements would vary. But this prompt up here, please save it. You will use this so much. Another benefit is that if I go down here, let's just complete the prompt. And that is this little Excel icon. So let us just finish it. We can click here and then we are exporting this to an Excel book. And if I click view here, then we have everything here in an Excel book. You can see it here. We have there. Let's click uh, OK here. Then we have everything nicely in table. So we have the current wording, suggested improvement and explanation. I can easily make this a table or whatever I want. That's not the scope of this exercise. So let us go back to Copilot again. So far, we pretty much just gave one prompt and then we have an answer back. But let's do a conversation. So right here, I say plan a staff party for my company. We prefer a combination of dance and games. The budget is limited. And to keep costs down, we are eight people who cook the food ourselves. And then we hit enter. So the benefit of these conversations is that we can have a feedback loop where we can ask follow up questions and ask for further explanations. We can specify or clarify our original task or uh, question. So this is like learning in an engage engaging way. It's like having an instructor. So here you can see that we are planning our party. And again, we haven't gave much context. We can easily do so. So here we say that cooking yourself is a great way to save money, blah, blah, blah. Then I go down here. The first thing, let's say that this was a great plan. We can even have it, we could have to um, be more elaborate. Then I can say, great. And this is not because I think Copilot is human. This is just to give feedback to Copilot. So here I say, great, continue in this style. So here I say, make a tree course menu. It must be healthy and easy to make. Let us hit enter. 
now we are getting a tree course menu. And remember here that we are, of course, we're creating a tree course menu. It's healthy and easy to make, but it will also, let me scroll up to our initial prompt. It will also take this context into consideration because right now we're having a conversation. So here it will say, it will also know that the budget is limited and we are eight people that cook the food. So right now I'm getting sashimi and carrot bites, creamy chicken, advocate noodles, healthy baked pumpkin cheese cake. And here you can see we have links to this, the Mary Maker Sisters uh, and the Yellow Brisk More. So we can even learn more. Let's say that this was good. And then we can uh, go down here to ask me everything. And here I can say, help me make a shopping list for the food. Then I hit enter. Then Copilot will create a shopping list for us. And uh, here's a shopping list. And again, we haven't told um, how many people we are. So here we'll just say that we need chicken breast, chinis, fasools, all of these. So that was fine. Then I say, great, give me quantity specifications. And then I can say we are 120 people or whatever number we are. Then I click enter. So now you will see that we have a lot of chicken breasts, for example, or we have a lot of carrots. For a party of, here's a breakdown of the quantities you'll need for each court page on general catering guidelines. So here we have uh, 15 pounds. And if you if you calculate in kilograms, you can easily ask ChatGPT to translate um, pounds to kilograms. And again, if I go down to my grocery shop, shops with these three lists, then I would uh, might want to gather these. You can also try to ask to gather this. So if I go down here and I say, great, gather the um, shopping lists for each course into one shopping list. It could also be that I want categories and that is um, group the items in categories, then it will be a lot easier to go shopping. Let's see. So it's just like having a conversation. A lot of the times you will see that you and you ask for something that you would definitely not want to have the answers to. And that that will be um, you can just refine, you can just do a follow up conversation or can do a completely new topic. So right now you can see here we have it in categories, you might want to do fruits and, and vegetables and meat, you just ask ChatGPT what categories you want or give it a little bit of understanding of what you want to accomplish. So that's great. Then I also I could also say perfect. What's the reci recipe or the and that could be let me scroll up. That could be the appetizer. I can, of course, I can take all of them. Let's just take the appetizer here. Then I um, have an enter. And here you can see that we are now, it says five out of 30. That means that we have a 30 uh, limit uh, for prompts in one conversation. So once we read that, we need to move on to a new conversation. That is the limit. Currently, it will probably increase when you watch this video in the future. Right now we are getting the recipe. This is very, very um, impressive. And here it says that um, it says sushini shredded and, and blah blah blah. I can I can also say that I want to eat vegetarian and update both shopping list and recipes. So that will look like this. We want to eat. Make a vegetarian update both the shopping list and recipes like this. So right now we are um, getting an updated menu. So as you see here, now right now it's a party in our company and we want to plan the food, but this could be project planning in whatever 
area you work with. So now we get some new things. We get a new appetizer, a new main course and a dessert. I can also choose these learn more. So let us just do that while Copilot works. Let me click accept. Here are more healthy and vegan and vegetarian appetizers. So that will be links that Copilot thinks are, are relevant to us. And I can go back here. And here you can see we also have the updated uh, shopping list. We can also give Copilot a role. So if I go down here, then I can say re create the menu like Gordon Ramsay would do it. Then we are telling Copilot that it should behave like Gordon Ramsay or how he wants to cook this. Then you will see that the menu will be changed. So here you can say sophisticated. Now I get beetroot carpaccio, I get wild mushroom risotto. So now you will see that this changes. It's also perfect if you have some food in your fridge, like say you're in a private um, part. You have some food and then you want to have a menu based on some of the food that you have in the fridge combined with whatever you want to buy. Very nice. In our answers, you will see these icons. We can give feedback to Copilot. That is, we can help the module. So if I click like here, that tells the model that I like these answers. This will not get me a more personal, personalized experience. This just means that I will help the model as a whole. So I'll help you and all the other people in the world. Similarly, I could have a dislike. It's not something in a busy world or a busy uh, work life. You will probably not have time to always provide feedback, but I try to do it here and there just to help the model. And because I think this is a great project, which is free. Similarly, I can also click copy here. That means that I'm copying the answer here. So let's try to uh, now we have copied it. Let's try to open up a Word document. I open up Word here and let me open up a blank document and paste it in. If I click Control V here, you can see that it gets pasted in uh, with all this uh, formatting. Let me do a Control C here and let me just zoom back here. Let's say that I have some text beforehand and then I want uh, the co-pilot answers. I want it to be formatted as this text here. I can do it in several ways. The easiest way would be to right click and here you can say I can keep text only or I can merge the formatting. That means that I will get the same font as this up here and I'll also have these um, images. I can also, let me just do this. I have the blah, blah, blah. Uh, Control V, now I will have a different font. Then I can go up to the font I like. Then I can click the Format Painter and then I can do a format of all this text. And here you can see that it now changes to the font that I'm using currently in the document. So be aware of that you just not blatantly uh, paste in the answers from Copilot in your, for example, your emails, then some of your coworkers or customers might think this is a little bit unprofessional. Personally, I think it's fine to generate answers from Copilot, but still we are in a society where this technology is new. So yeah, I'll probably just hide it a bit. And yes, I use Copilot uh, a lot. Let me just go out of this. I can also choose to export the answer here. Here I can choose to have it in a Word, PDF or text document. Right now it will be in a PDF document without these um, images. And I can also see I have it powered by AI. Let me just click cancel here. I can also choose to share an answer. So here I click share. And here I can choose to share it through email. I can choose to share it on social media. I will rarely use this, but I can choose to copy this link up here. It says link copy to clipboard. Try to click control shift N that will open up a private browser. This is to show you how it looks in another instance, because I can press control V. You can see that this has a unique URL. When I click enter here, you can see that our uh, um, answer, at least uh, this prompt and this answer, it can now be found by new users. They still need to sign in up here 
and um, but they can use this uh, when they want. Let me close it again. And then we do this. I can also choose to have my answer uh, read aloud. So if I click here, then uh, it will take a few seconds. And then um, Copilot will read the answer aloud. Make sure to have your speakers turned on. I can uh, click this. I can also choose to talk to Copilot with my own voice. So let's have a new topic here. And, and again, sometimes you will see that these uh, images disappear in the front page. To solve for that, just refresh the browser and they're back. Let me go to creative. To do so, I click use microphone. And then I choose to allow my microphone. What's the capital in Denmark? And here, uh, here it says, and let me just stop listening. Let me do this over. So here it says that my microphone. So I'll click the microphone and then I'll ask. What's the capital in Denmark? I click stop listening. Now you see that I can speak to Copilot. Then I can click submit and here you will see that yes, this is again Copenhagen. Uh, you should definitely visit us here. And I'm not in the tourist agency or anything. I just think this is a very nice city. So what we also can do here is that we have these reasons. This can uh, this list will fill quickly because right now we are only like one hour in, and we we have a lot of recent chats. Here, um, what you can do is to give your conversations names. For example, if I want to reuse something, that could be uh, the VAT rate in Denmark. Then I can click this little pointer here. And what I usually do here is that I say save in front of it. And then I can hit the V. Now it will be a little bit easier to find when I scroll down. Yes, it's still uh, quite hard to find, but often I use the same prompts over and over. I could also, um, let's have this calculate to break even point. I could also categorize them. So if I say math or job application, then I can have a prefix there. Similarly, I could choose to delete conversations. Let's not, let's not delete the GDPR rules in a humorous way. Let's take this. I can delete this, then it will disappear over here. Let's also, for example, go to copying data in software programs. I can click the three dots and here again, I can share or export the entire conversation, which can also be uh, beneficial. The last thing here for now in this introduction, let's also see how we can use the sidebar here in Copilot. Let's go back to CNN and our article. Let me just click so we can see it. I had a singer, but you had probably another article. Let's open up the Copilot sidebar. And again, uh, it's important that you gave access to the Copilot sidebar like we did in the beginning. So uh, you need to do that. And if you forgot that, then click these three dots, click the settings, go to the sidebar, go to Copilot, and make sure you allow Microsoft uh, to access the, the, um, the page content. Let's go back here. Let's have a creative. Because now, let me show you here, what we're going to do here, we say, summarize the article in three bullets. And again, easy to understand. I like this a lot because then I can understand the topics uh, very fast. Right now, it's looking at this page and then it summarizes the things. Imagine how powerful this is. We can do competitive analysis based on, let's say they are a web shop and we want to analyze prices or whatever we are, um, we want to analyze, then this is uh, so, so fast. Here it is. Now we have a summarization of the web page. Then th that's all for the sidebar. Now we will get back to that later in the course. Let me go back to Copilot and a new topic. Now we continue to the next co-pilot lesson, which is right here.